Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown. I'm Matthew Peterson. Week three of the preseason is in the books, which means regular season football, a.k.a. real football, is right around the corner. And with that being said, it's time for the front office for the Denver Broncos to trim their roster down. So let's get started with my 53-man roster projection. Starting on the offensive side of things, here's the deal for the Broncos and really for the entire NFL Final roster is due by Tuesday, August 31st at 4 p.m. That's when they got to get the list down to 53 players. There's a little extra wiggle room, some caveats. We'll talk about that later. But overall, I think this is a very sneaky and talented roster. You guys have seen it all preseason long, the defense especially. I mean, the secondary is going to be one of the best, if not the best, in the NFL. You get Von Miller back to rush the quarterback. Linebacking core solid as well. And the offense, it all hinges on the quarterback play, which is true for every NFL team pretty much every season. But the wide receiver room, I think, is loaded. Love the running back duo. We're going to unpack all of this. But let's start with the offensive projected depth chart in the final 53-man roster. Here's the quarterback room. I think we're going to have two quarterbacks uh, on this roster, Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. Some NFL teams like to go two over three to get an extra roster spot. I think the Broncos do that exactly. They put Rippin on the practice squad to get an extra spot elsewhere. But here's the deal with Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. It's been a quarterback battle all preseason and training camp. So let me know, over or under 10 starts for Teddy this season. This is not so much a reflection of Bridgewater's play as much as it's just the fact that these two, I think, will be dueling all season long and the leashes will be short, okay? So hop down in the comments. Give me an over or an under for 10 starts this season for Teddy Bridgewater. Next up, we've got the running back room. I've got four guys making the roster. Not a ton of surprising news here. Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, I've got Boone, you see that asterisk, he's injured, and we'll talk about that in just a brief moment, and Royce Freeman, who was on the outside looking in, I think now makes the roster thanks to that injury luck, so here's the deal with Boone though, really quickly, uh, on Tuesday he's going to be put on the active, he's going to put on the roster, the very next day I suspect the Broncos will put him on short term IR which will open up an extra roster space and that in turn can bring on someone from the practice squad and I'm thinking about fullback Andrew Beck so be on the lookout for that. Up next it's the wide receiver room, this has been the most competitive room all preseason long in my opinion. Corlin Sutton, no doubt, or Jerry Judy, can't wait to see the sophomore breakout season. Tim Patrick, the number one guy last year, he slots in at three. K.J. Hamler provides that deep threat. And then you've got the competitive five, six, and seven. I'm going to go with Deontay Spencer, Tyree Cleveland, and Trinity Benson. At the end of the day, if you want to make a roster as a bubble guy, you have to help out on special teams. We saw Benson provide that ability in the final preseason game. Cleveland can do that as well. And Spencer, I just don't think they're ready to give up on as a wide receiver option. Sure, you could have gone with Seth Williams here. I think Kendall Hinton's time is done. A lot of options up in the air. Those are the three guys at the bottom I'm going with. But who do you think will be the leading receiver for the Broncos this season? Going to be Corlin Sutton coming off that ACL injury and taking back wide receiver number one. Tim Patrick picking up where he left off or Jerry Judy for a breakout season. I think any of those three options are very viable. Judy is certainly the more attractive one because he's that first round pick from a year ago. But Corlin Sutton is a reception magnet. I don't think there's a wrong answer. But go down to the comments and let me know what you think. Next, it's the tight end room here, and I think the Broncos will roll with three guys here. Nothing too surprising as well. This is probably the least competitive room throughout all of preseason. Noah Fant, I'm hoping he can really turn things on uh, heading into year number three. And the list follows as well. Um, this is, like I said, not a super competitive tight end depth chart. Everyone sort of saw this coming, so there it is. Up next, a little more competitive. The guys up front, the Hogs in the trenches, the offensive line. Can't wait to see Garrett Bowles. Um, he's going to be great, right? Dalton Reisner, Crushenberry, Glasgow. And then here's where it got interesting. At right tackle, I've got Massey up there. Could be Calvin Anderson. Anderson started week three, but I think they're just alternating still to see who got the best look. I'm going to go with Massey. 
Here's the one notable name I left off this list. It's Cam Fleming. All right, the Broncos cut him. They're going to owe about a million-ish in dead cap. No one really knows what the cap means. You can always play with numbers, but that's what the experts say. I left him off because he was bubble at best going into week three against the Rams, and he let up that bad sack force fumble on Drew Locke. I think was probably the nail in the coffin for him. And so you've got Massey and Anderson. One will be the swing tackle. One will be the starting right tackle. And then you got some help on the interior as well. But overall, I'm taking nine guys on this offensive line depth chart. But talking about the Broncos offense, who's the best player on this Broncos offense? Is it Jerry Judy? Is it Melvin Gordon or Javante Williams? You could go a number of directions. How about, I don't know, Bowles on the offensive line? Not a bad pick right there. An underappreciated guy, of course, because it's the offensive line. They just don't get that much love. But let me know in the comments who you think is the best player on the Broncos offense. Broncos fans, if you love the Broncos or simply put, if you hate the Kansas City Chiefs, both are acceptable answers and both just require one piece of action. Go ahead and subscribe right here to Broncos Breakdown. We'll give you the best news, rumors, and content, all the above throughout the entire 2021 regular season. So subscribe right now if you love the Broncos or simply if you just hate the Kansas City Chiefs. Either answer is acceptable here. Now time for the Broncos 53-man projected roster for the defensive side of things. And this is a defense myself and everyone is super excited to see a lot of fun pieces and so we're going to get started here we're going to go we're going to go so yeah well, let's start with the defensive line we'll work our way that way okay again this was another position group that wasn't super competitive okay not a ton of shake up here Shelby Harris he had a great game uh, against the Rams in that final preseason game but a lot of the lower guys um Deshaun Williams, I mean, this, like I said, was not super competitive. The only competitive thing or the uh, closest battle, I will say, in the spot right here down in the trenches, um, leaving off some guys like Marquis Spencer for Shamar Steven. So that's kind of where it got roster bubbly. But overall, I got six guys up front for me on the defensive line. Let's check out the linebackers now. This is going to be one of the best linebacking units in the NFL, in my opinion, when you've got Von Miller and Bradley Chubb on either side right there. Again, this was not a uber-competitive linebacker depth chart. Once you had Watson cut earlier, the picture got very clear, okay? Here's what I'm really pumped to see. How about Cooper and Browning? Both those guys have really come on late down the stretch in preseason going to be exciting to see when they get opportunities coming in replacement for Bradley Chubb, Von Miller, and working on the inside for Josie Jewell and Johnson as well. Overall, this is a really complete top-to-bottom linebacking core for the Broncos. So I've got eight guys making it right there on my depth chart and my 53-man projection. But talking about Miller and Chubb, who do you think will have more sacks this season? Are you going to go with Von Miller as he comes back? Missing all of last season, or Bradley Chubb, maybe he wants to get himself up there. But either way, when these two are on the field together, the numbers are ridiculous. It's so much better, and this is just Captain Obvious talking, when they're together versus just one on the field. But hop down in the comments. Let me know who you think will have more sacks this season between Miller and Chubb. Next, we go over to the cornerback room in one of the best rooms across the entire NFL. Why? Because you got Kyle Fuller coming over from the Chicago Bears. He's a great on-ball, off-ball. He's a complete corner. Ronald Darby as well. Then Bryce Callahan, just terrific in the slot, simply put. I had him on my surprise cut earlier list, a uh, surprise cut list earlier. I didn't think it was going to happen, but people got grumpy with me. I wanted to be known. I'm like, I, I believe Callahan is absolutely going to be an impactful guy for the Broncos, but it was just an interesting floater idea. And then finally, Patrick Sertan, the second, of course, first-round pick. Here's where it got a little more interesting, okay? You check out the bottom two names right there, and those, the, the first name um, could have, like, not super surprising right there. You check out Michael O.J. Mudia. Um, Mudia, yeah, saw that one coming. Now, he's going to be injured to start the season. I'm going to guess they're going to put him on short-term IR and pick up an extra roster spot when they do so. After that, though, 
that's where things kind of get interesting for that six and final corner spot. I went with Parnell Motley mostly because he started with the first unit, uh, the second unit today. So I think he will make the roster. But who do you think will lead the Broncos in interceptions this season? You can go with Kyle Fuller. There's really no wrong answer. Fuller, you could go with PS2. Let me know. Tell me down in the comments who will lead the Broncos in interception. Finally on the defense, it's the guys in the back. It is the safety death chart here. I've got the Broncos taking five safeties. This one could have gone with either four or five. But honestly, between Johnson, Stearns, and P.J. Locke, all were so impressive during the preseason I think Denver finds a way to take all of them because if they don't and they put one of them on the practice squad, another NFL team is going to steal them. That's my prediction. So I think Denver is going to be forced to pick up five right here. So those are the five safeties I've got on my projected roster. And finally, the unsung heroes. How about the special teams, guys? Yeah, no-brainer here. We can just run through this. McManus, Martin, it's really no-brainer. These guys had won the job uh, back in June, honestly. So, now it's time for you to be the teacher. Get out your red pen. Grade my 53-man projected roster, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If I'm leaving someone off, if I put someone on you don't like, whatever you want to do. This is your time to be the teacher, and let me know down in the comments.